Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Uh, this is Damon Stengel here. I'm here with uh, Muhammad Abdul Razik of Yemenite Front. And uh, today we just wanted to uh, do a, a casually formatted uh, discussion. This is actually an idea that I had a while back that I've actually uh, publicly invited uh, Muhammad Abdul Razik uh, on uh, Twitter and uh mentions in my previous streams to uh, say like, hey, let's just have a discussion. Let's uh, put it, put aside the hostilities and uh, let's do this. And uh, it's Ramadan on top of it. So uh, we're just going to like, just talk casually, whatever's on the top of our minds. And, uh, you know, like we'll, we'll be talking about like, you know, how we connect with, uh, God through both of our perspectives. Uh, technically, uh, just as I've uh, mentioned on the stream uh, with RC Apologist last night, which technically this is also a continuation of, um, we're just going to like continue like talking about the like what what is Qadr and that how we technically don't disagree on, and then how I pointed out. To him last night, this is exactly like uh, the beliefs of uh, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, and this is the angle that I use to to read the books of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, and this is the angle of how we should actually look at like all prophets and reformers. So, uh, Brother Abdul Razik, uh, I'll let you have it from here. Uh, uh, first of all, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for having me on. Um, and it's nice that we're going to have this discussion. Uh, you know, unfortunately, <clears throat> in the past, you know, as you mentioned, there were hostilities and it's been getting a bit heated recently. But alhamdulillah with Ramadan, um, you know, things have calmed down. And especially this morning, well, for me, it was the morning, uh, for you, it was the evening when we had the discussion with uh, RC. Kind of uh, got us to this position now, alhamdulillah, where we can actually have a discussion. Uh, as you mentioned, you did invite me before. But, um, and yeah, I mean, we've touched upon uh, Qadr in in RC Apologists' uh, stream, and alhamdulillah, you know, on that point, we do agree. You know, there is nothing that we don't disagree on, there is nothing that we have a difference of opinion on in terms of that. So there is a commonality there, but, you know, obviously, with you identifying as a Muslim, um, it's only natural that you would have the same understanding as, uh, of, uh, you know, <coughs> Qadr or Qadr as uh, the Muslims do. So, you know, in, I don't think our apologist actually uh, understood it so quite well, or maybe he hasn't heard it um, the way we've explained it to him. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to know that there are similarities, you know, that there are things that we can agree upon and that there isn't a difference of, uh, you know, ideologies uh, or theology with everything uh, regarding us. But obviously, as we discussed um, <coughs> after the stream, there were still quite a few things that we deferred on, and we could definitely touch upon that and explore that further. Yeah, inshallah. And then, of course, like, as I, as we both mentioned, in, like, a uh, friendly and not, not in, like, a hostile sort of way, as, after all, we are both uh, observing uh ramadan and you know it's time to cool down things so um like i guess i'll i'll just uh open it like for me like i posted like five videos on my youtube channel uh they partially explain why i myself personally believe in the claim of uh Mahmed. I, I did uh send it to you uh on Discord in the past, I don't think you got around to uh, watching it yet. But, no. but in my humble opinion, like those are uh, like explicit uh, proofs of his uh, truthfulness. And 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 of course, uh, we will go go to the Quran and the uh, Al Hadith because. Uh, in those five videos, I did I did cite uh, Quranic verses and I did uh, cite uh, certain uh, hadith that that reference uh, the latter days 
uh, the, the timing of the latter days, because I don't think uh, Yemenite and I disagree on uh, like like the Messiah will come at a time where uh, things are more open, uh, deception is more like prevalent among in the society, and uh, frequent wars, lots of killing, al Hajj, uh, the the Uma just. Uh, disintegrating into like uh, several uh, pieces uh, due to much uh, infighting and uh, and then basically just other things like I'm just thinking of like Sahih al-Bakhari uh, uh, 71 to 21 uh, off the top of my head and like I'm a firm believer of that hadith uh, and I, I often use that at, when I discuss uh, with Sunnis such as uh, Farhan Khan, uh, that, hey, this is why I believe that Ahmadiyya is true. Okay. So, you know, obviously when we have MGA himself uh, claiming to be the Messiah and then Mahdi, and he's talking about it, and obviously you guys uh, call him the Latter-day Messiah as well. Um, we know that, uh, as you mentioned in Bukhari, he's mentioned that, you know, the, the, that all of these will happen towards the end of end times. Um, and then obviously there are other hadith that tell us uh, with explicit identification who this Messiah is going to be that's going to uh, come down. And it is explicitly named as um, Isa ibn Maryam, okay, who's known as the Messiah in the Quran and in the Sunnah. So when we see, for example, in Sahih Muslim 2937a, that Isa ibn Maryam is actually identified as the one coming down upon the white minaret and doing the things that he will be doing, uh, such as breaking the cross, uh, slaughtering of the pig, and abolishing the jizya, um, and giving these uh, and giving the people an ultimatum, you know, either it's accept Islam or there is war. Uh, and then obviously it goes into further details about what will happen when the age of Jamal will come and there are other hadith. Uh, talk about this, so and as well as Messiah the jail that he will kill him, and he will live for forty years, and he will die among his people, and he will be buried, and so on and so forth. So we have a clear, explicit um, description of what will happen, and who this Messiah is going to be. Uh, and like I said, the Quran calls him a Messiah. Uh, as well as the Rasulullah in the authentic hadith. Now, when we look at MJ himself and his claim of being the Latter Day Messiah, did he do the things that uh, is is uh, testified to in the hadith? Now, you said you're a firm believer in the hadith, but in order for you to be a firm believer in what these uh, what the hadith actually say, you would have to. Uh, either be able to argue that MGA actually has done the things that have been prophesized about the Messiah, and um, or uh, provide evidence for a certain interpretation of these hadith that you hold to be true. So that would be my uh, you know, sort of response, yeah, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Just noting down uh, what you say, so I keep up. Uh, yeah, um, right. So, uh, so in regards to like uh, the identification of the Messiah, um, you probably know this very well. Uh, that uh, we often uh, cite uh, Sahih al Bukhari a lot, uh, like one hadith that comes to mind, like I don't exactly remember the numbering, but I, but what I do remember is it's from a uh, book 60 uh, of of the Anbiya of Sahih Bukhari and uh, and there are two hadith uh, that uh, Imam Bukhari uh, included. Uh, one is of uh, when, when he uh, went up, when, when he, uh, <coughs> excuse me, did the Miraj. <laughs> And and he saw like Heather Isa lay some as red complexion, uh, curly hair, and and of a like a certain firm build, and uh, with uh, and then uh, in another hadith that uh, Imam Bukhari uh, quoted, uh, 
this hadith talks about how uh, the Dajjal will go around the, the Kaaba and, and he will be followed by the Messiah. And, and, th and this Messiah is uh, quoted as like having like brown skin, uh, wavy, wavy, uh, long hair and just chasing the Dajjal around. So this is, so these are like uh, the points that like I, what I would mention like for for the differences in the identity of the Messiah and then uh and then you mentioned uh Sahih Bukhari uh no I'm sorry Muslim. Sahih Muslim Sahih Muslim twenty nine thirty seven eight because I, I am a frequent user of this hadith as well. I know. Uh -huh. so like in our case like we we cite this hadith as proof that the Messiah would be a prophet um i think obviously you and i defer on the identity but but, we, but I, I do think uh and correct me if i'm wrong that that's the messiah will be a prophet um and then uh and then of course the abolishment of uh jizya one of so you know the one of the things that we cite as proof is that the the messiah like there's a variation of the hadith i believe it's uh, uh quoted in a uh, that's uh that's the messiah will end like uh religious wars and uh this is what uh here's a Ghulam ahmed -Islam, uh, quoted in in his books uh, such as a uh, british government and uh jihad and and he mentions that you know, since the Messiah it has come to like end all religious wars, this is the meaning of why there's no jizya at this time because the circumstances and the conditions for 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 why the sword was raised is not like applicable at this time for now. And, uh, and then a, another sign that that we use, like another like way to look at that hadith, is that. Uh, and, and Quorum Shaw and I have both mentioned this in our streams is that many like the Muslim nations, they're not really implementing like jizya at this time because the the conditions for for establishing jizya is not there right because they're busy fighting amongst each other and they're not really like fighting like non Muslims per se. So and then uh And then we believe that uh, the Messiah al Dajjal, like, is not really like literally like a person, but but rather it's like a group of people who have one strategy, and, and that strategy is to deceive people, to to turn them away from Islam, to point them towards a false religion. I mean, this is like explicitly mentioned in uh, Sahih Muslim uh, twenty nine thirty seven a. Uh, where the Dajjal will, will invite people to a false religion. Uh, we believe that uh, that this refers to none other than the Christian missionaries, because as we see during the time of uh, Mirza Qalam Mahmed and just before, uh, they were like highly increasing their missionary activities. Uh, they were abusing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were trying really hard to de- to de uh, convert um, Muslims from their faith and try to get them to join uh, Christianity and uh, now regarding like uh, like the Messi saint being said to be Isa bin Marayim as I have uh, mentioned to you uh, in a tweet in the past I've told you that uh, this is uh, a title uh, this is much like like we like to use that uh, much like how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, was the likeness of uh, Hadrat Musa Islam being a law giving prophet, uh, similarly, uh, someone in a likeness of uh, the Messiah, son of Mary, must come for the Ummah as well because it is to like establish that great sign, that likeness, because we've already learned from the Jews what how, how they ended up. And similarly, uh, like much, much of the Muslims, uh, they, they became like much like the Jews, like. 
of course, I mean, that's subjective between the two of us, but I, but he, but I believe uh, Ruzik and I are, are also firm believers in that Hadith that some, that a lot of in the Ummah will become like the Jews and Christians. And that's what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on his deathbed was trying to warn us against. Don't, don't become like them. And, and that's why we, we say, uh, al billahi min shaitan regime, uh, So, so basically, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying that you know the, this is why we always have to recite this prayer because it is our means of not becoming like the Jews and the Christians. Um. So. Um. And and I think uh, since I like to lay like emphasis on uh like the identity of the Messiah. I think one topic that 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 needs to be discussed is the the death of uh, Isa bin Mar Isa bin Marayam alayhi salam because uh and this is this is like ultimately uh where I like to emphasize that this is what needs to be discussed and I of course uh you you say that it's it's about uh Prophethood, uh, and no, it's, or, uh, go on, yeah, finish up. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, like many of you, like I've talked to like Sunnis of a variety of opinions. So, um, there are some, of course, that do believe that Heather Isa Islam has passed away, uh, but you believe that he is alive in the heavens. But, but yeah, the verses that I like to cite are uh, chapter three, verse. Uh, 55 or 56 in our translation and uh, chap chapter 5 verse uh, 118 and uh, interesting enough I, I also like to uh, cite uh, what is it uh, chapter 3 verse uh, 40 45 not not to be confused with 144 I'm talking about something completely different uh, the one that that says that uh, Jesus healed the sick cured the leper uh, like at the beginning of that verse it, it uses the past tense uh, he was sent for uh, the Bani Israel, and I personally find that uh, impossible that uh, if Isa bin Marayam were were to be sent for uh, the Muslims as well as, uh, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, his mission is incomplete. So, right? Uh, is that your belief? His mission is incomplete? No. Because uh, I do, if I remember from uh, the stream, uh, like, there's so much to unpack. But yeah. well, yeah, I mean, I thought up, I thought you mentioned something like that, or yeah, somebody yeah. else in the stream mentioned. But uh, so I'll, I'll uh, clarify what I mean when I say no, his mission is uh, not incomplete. Okay, um, because uh, but to, just to address uh, the hadith first of all, because you mentioned that there is a difference between the two people mentioned in Bukhari in terms of the description. So when the hadith you were actually re referring to when it comes about uh, the man circum, uh, circum, uh, bambi, uh, circumambulating the Kaaba, this is in uh, Bukhari uh, 34, 39 and 3440. They were one and the same, uh, which is on two different numbers. Um, now, when uh, the thing is, the two individuals are, who are described are actually identified. One is, this is Isa, yeah. So they, and it says in the Arabic, "Hada al Masihu ibn Maryam." Okay, so it's very explicit that this is uh, Ibn Maryam, and obviously in the English translation, it mentions this is Jesus, son of Mary, and he actually gives the description of the other person, right? And uh, what do you call it? He had very curly hair, was blind in the right eye, resembling uh, Ibn Qatan, and infidel in appearance. Uh, he was placing his hands on the shoulders of a person while performing tawaf around the Kaaba. I asked, Who is this? They replied, Al Masih al Dajjal. Yeah? And the Arabic called Al Masih al Dajjal. So, even with the hadith that you appeal to, there is a positive identification of two individuals. right? So, when you talk about the uh, you know, the identification of these, and you gave the description of, uh, you know, Isa ibn Maryam is a title, and 
uh, Mr. Dajjal is referring to a group. Uh, if you re remember my initial question or initial request, rather, is if you do have a, di a different interpretation from what the Mufassirin uh, have already uh, concluded, uh, then you would have to provide evidence for where you get this interpretation from. Um, because at the end of the day, this is wahi that, will, that came to Rasul right? So this is something that um, uh, that he mentioned. So this is not something that MGA mentioned. This is something that Rasul has mentioned. So this is his wahi, the wahi that came to him. And this is something that needs to be explained. Now the Mufassirin, you know, for example, when you look in Fath al-Bari uh, by Ibn Hajar al-Sqalani, and you read the tafsir, right? You will never see the interpretation that you present so, you know, again, when, you, uh, when it comes back to your turn uh, to speak, inshallah, uh, just please try and uh, provide the evidence of how you say, you know, this Isna bin Amriyam is a title. Uh, and how can it be a title when, uh, to another individual, when uh, Isna bin Amriyam is already mentioned in the Quran as such, right? Now, in Sahih Muslim 2937, uh, when you mentioned it and you said that you think it's, uh, and this is kind of the hadith you kind of quote to, to show that this is uh, referring to a group of people that try to um, misguide and everything, right? We have to remember that the, uh, that al Rasul also mentions, right, that when he comes, yeah, uh, I'm speaking well, for 40 days, one day will be like a year and one day will be like a month, and one day will be like a week, and the rest of the days will be like your days, right? So this is even, it's not just about the, so the time associated with the coming of a Messiah Dajjal is also to be changed. So the question again I would ask you is when uh, when uh, MGA came or when these, um, uh, sorry, when these uh, people, uh, or group of people that you claim collectively uh, make what is known as uh, the jail um, has the time actually uh, gone as has been described by Rasulullah uh, and again if you give a different uh, description from what is apparent then where do you get the interpretation from who, who is it that told you this and what is their evidence for it you know and and whenever he talks about this uh, Masih al-Dajjal, it always refers to him in the singular. So it's not as a group of people. Right? And again, he says, he would then co give command to the sky and there would be rainfall upon the earth. So these group of people, have they, you know, given command to the earth, uh, to the skies and from their command, the earth has uh, fallen? Obviously not, because they don't do this, right? Um, and uh, what do you call it? So yeah, and there are many descriptions, okay, that, um, that talks about, uh, thing. and then it talks about the person, right? Or the young man who comes to him and he cuts him in half, right? And then the, uh, what do you call it? And obviously in other, in other hadith or uh, explanations as well, we mentioned, we know about this young man, he actually belies the Messiah of the Jali when the Rasul, when, when the Dajjal cuts him in half and then he puts him back together again, um, the man just says to him, look, surely you are a liar, right? And now I know for sure that you are a liar. So this is a certain, this is one man who's been cut in half and he's uh, being, uh, and now he's telling the Dajjal, you're, you're a liar, yeah, you're not, you're not uh, God, you're, you're not anyone that's worthy of worship. And we also know from other hadith that, um, what do you call it? Uh, Dajjal will have kafir written on his forehead, right? And it says it will be blind in one eye, right? So there are very uh, explicit descriptions of this this individual, and and again for for everything that's mentioned within this hadith, you would have to provide evidence, not opinion, but evidence that would support your position. Because I cannot simply open the book of Ibn Hajar al-Sqalani and he will agree with me in my interpretation because that's where I get it from, I get it from him. So uh, this is not a matter of my opinion. Um, now, going on to uh, what you mentioned about uh, chapter 3, verse 55, when you uh, mentioned uh, this um, uh, regarding the 
you know, the prophethood, because you, you mentioned that the Messiah would be a prophet as well. Now, here's what's interesting about chapter 3, verse 55, you know, when it talks about Tawafa. So what does Allah mean when he says about uh, Isa, you know, Tawafa, uh, uh, you know, or, um, yeah, I can't remember the verse uh, of my heart, but when he mentions the uh, I think it's uh, in... I think yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. in That's correct, yeah. So, in Mutawafika, okay. So, what does he mean by Mutawafika? Okay. Now, what we have to understand is Tawafa can also mean to end something, right? Or Qabd, right? What is known in uh, Arabic as Qabd. And this is mentioned. Um, uh, by what they call it, the ulama as well. That the qabd or the tawaffa of Isa is of two meanings. Okay, one is that his uh, prophethood has ended. Okay, so his mission has been completed in terms of his prophethood to Bani Israel. Okay, so that part is done. Right, and the reason for this is because when he returns in the second coming, he will not come as a prophet, but he will come as the Messiah. Uh, and a follower of Rasul okay, and this is why it is mentioned that Rasul says that he has more rights over Isa than anyone else, and there will be no prophet after himself, right? So, uh, no prophet after Rasul Now, um, so this is the first part. This is the first meaning of Matuafika, uh, right? That he has um, ended the the prophethood. Okay. The second meaning of Matawafika is that he was raised up alive. Okay, and now, now Matawafika or Tawafa, it does have, uh, does carry the meaning of death. This is uh, absolutely true. However, it's not the only meaning. And in the context of chapter three, verse fifty-five, it is not. It does not mean death. Rather, it means that he was raised up alive and put in a state of sleep. And this is mentioned again uh, by the Mufassirin, by the majority of the Mufassirin. Um, so these are the two um, very clear examples from the word Matawafika in chapter 3, verse 55, that talks about um, the, uh, what would happen to Isa And uh, there were two other verses that you've mentioned. Uh, I think one is sort of Maida. If you can remind me just quickly of the two other verses that you mentioned, inshallah, and I'll address them. So it's a, it's a chapter uh, three, uh, verse uh, forty nine, and uh, the part of the verse that I I cite just to make my claim is Allah min al-Shaytan al-Rajim, wa Rasul lan ila bani Israel. So, so that this is uh, chapter three, uh, verse forty nine, and uh, the other verse that I've mentioned is uh, chapter five, verse. 117 i accidentally said 118 based off of uh since we have bismillah as a verse but it's yeah, uh yeah. 117 in uh your yeah. your uh, so yeah no problem okay that's fine um okay so let's just look at that inshallah quickly So Bismillah. Um, so when he says in chapter three, verse forty-nine, "Wa Rasulun ila bani Israel." Okay. Now this is not a you know a difficult point to answer because was he a messenger to bani Israel? Of course. And even MJ himself has mentioned uh, that uh, Isa was the last, and he uses the word Khatim as well. Uh, so he uses the word Khatam, uh, referring to Isa as being the last of the messengers that came to Bani Israel. So there is no dispute that um, Isa ibn Maryam was a messenger to Bani Israel. But when he comes in the second coming, he, he is to come as a follower of Rasulullah as the Messiah who will establish the law of uh, Rasulullah and uh, do the things that have been mentioned in the Ahadith. Now, the second one that you mentioned, chapter 5, verse 117. Now, the, the issue here is not really in the verse in of itself, 
uh, but rather the hadith that accompanies it because in the hadith Rasulullah says you know uh, that he would say as the you know the, the his uh, subhanallah what's the word as the uh, you know blessed prophets or something like that or you know um, not the noble prophets as mentioned I think he uh, mentioned it called him uh, an abd abd like a yeah, Abdul Salih, Al Abdul yeah. Salih, or something like that. Can I call Abdul Salih? And then he quotes the verse, right? And this is on the day of judgment. Now, so now we have to understand that just because the same thing is mentioned doesn't mean that the context or, or the word cannot change, right? So when Isa Ali Salam mentions this, yeah, uh, in this uh, ayah. Um, you know, فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتُ أَنْتَ رَقِيبُ عَلِيهِ رَقِيبُ عَلِيهِمْ وَأَنْتَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ So he's saying, you know, over here it's just going back to chapter 3 verse 55. Yeah, so when you raised me, right, when you raised me up alive, when you raised me up uh, asleep in that state, you were the watcher over them, all right? So this is not what I taught uh, Ben Israel, and obviously this is going off uh, the back of chapter 5, verse 116, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually asking Isa, did you tell the people to worship yourself and your mother besides Allah? And he responds that, you know, uh, I did not say this in a nutshell, and uh, when, you raised, when you took me up, when you raised me, you were the watcher over them. And likewise for Rasul, you know, um, when the people... Uh, come to drink from his blessed hands uh, at, uh, at Kothar, and the angels um, take them away. He actually, uh, you know, and all, and all of that. And he mentions this verse. He, he uh, recites this verse as well, and he will say that when Allah took him, right now over here, and when he apply, when the application is applied to Rasulullah, so the word to wafa no longer means to be taken up alive. But rather taken in death because we know that Rasul has actually died. Um, so this word can be applied in both ways, right? You know, taken in sleep and taken in death. And in fact, uh, it's, uh, you know, a few of the, I think, well, can't remember which sheikh, but one of the shiur, um have actually mentioned that there is a third meaning taken body, bodily and soul, right? So not just your soul, not just your body, but both. Yeah, you sent me that on Discord. Mm. Yeah, so um, so you have that explanation, and as you mentioned, I've sent it to you already. So there is evidence from scholars of this explanation. So it just shows that I'm not providing hearsay or you know opinion that's not backed up by any sources. So I think I've addressed everything that you've provided so far. Um, but just to really touch on the last thing. Uh, when it comes to the main difference between us, it's not the death of Isa It's, uh, you know, it's your belief in MGA, right? If you, if he wasn't around, if he never made the claims that he made, you would not believe the things that you believe today. Right? You'd believe what I'd believe because he wasn't around to, you know, uh, take uh, these verses and explain them in a different way. So yeah, so just just before you go on, uh, as I mentioned, um, please, uh, when you give your interpretation for these hadith for these areas, um, uh, you know, how, like where would you say that your interpretation comes from? Because I can tell you now, it's not an interpretation that comes from uh, the books of Ahl Sunnah. Uh so uh going back to uh just uh earlier um regarding like uh i'm just gonna briefly like comment on some of these because i kind of feel uh these are a little bit minute in comparison uh with uh some of the things we both unpacked just now but um regarding like uh the description of what uh, the dajjal like having like coffer on the forehead and then uh and then being blind in one eye uh, I think that uh, the thing is, like, if if the if someone had a uh, one eye and then had a uh, coffer using using a uh, using a common uh, thing uh, tattooed tattooed to his 
forehead. Uh, that wouldn't, and then he would like deceive like the Muslims. Like, but the thing is, like, in my opinion, that would be a bit of a, a theological uh, inconsistency because that's a little bit too literalistic. And let me emphasize on that because, uh, you know, as I as I've mentioned, and I think uh, you've mentioned this as well, uh, there are prayers in the Quran that protect us uh, from the Dajjal and, and their schemes. And and that uh, we both mentioned in uh, Sahih Muslim uh, 2937a, that's the Dajjal will be going around deceiving the Muslims. And we've also mentioned from Bukhari that the Dajjal will be going around the Kaaba, which would imply that that's he He's going to deceive the Muslims, whereas the Messiah is going to stop that from happening. Um, but, but if you have like something like written on, on your forehead, then and and let's say that this literalistic interpretation is uh, true, uh, then there's then there's really uh, no point in saying in saying that. Uh, that the Dajjal is going to go around uh, deceiving the Muslims and and causing the Ummah to uh, fall fall apart. I mean, uh, why is that? Why is that? Because because if he has like coffer written on his forehead literally, then then how can he deceive people? Because uh, the Shia uh, uh, teach teach these things uh, in the masjids it, and say that see if you see like coffer written on his forehead, then then don't follow him. So. Like this is the way like I view it as, like is, like when you when you have like a coffer like written on your forehead because we have to remember we're going back to like the perspective of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he's uh, having a vision uh, Allah's giving him a prophecy giving and that and that he sees the Dajjal and and the Dajjal like has like coffer written on his forehead like we have to remember like. And I'll bring up uh, Muhammad Ibn Surin. That that dream interpretations will will differ from uh, from what we see in like uh, in real life. I don't know if you accept any of that. So like like this is like subjective. Like it's uh, not it's not about you know accepting. As I keep mentioning, the interpretation that you have, where does it come from? That's the question that it comes to, that, that has to be answered. Like you know, you have this right. interpret, certain interpretation mm. of what the Dajjal and, and and just to just quickly touch on what you just said there. If it was kafir and how would that even be a test? How would that be deception? Well, you have to remember that even today, when we when we speak to we, we see a lot of ex-Muslims who at one point in their life knew for certain that the person they're talking to is a straight up kafir, yet couple of years or a couple of months or whatever it is down the line they end up being in the same boat even though the kufr is in front of their eyes right so and we also told that the Dajjal will be the greatest fitna this is the person that will do miraculous things would you know commander as i mentioned which you didn't uh, yet address but i think it's because i've cut you off he will command the skies to rain um, so when someone looks at a person who's claiming to be God and says and commands the sky to rain, it'll be something that was very hard to resist. And even in other other hadith, we see that Rasulullah tell the Sahaba, if he comes in your hey, in this like now, you guys hide, and I would fight him, right? So this is uh, even Rasulullah is referring to him as a singular person. He's actually telling the Sahaba hide from him. So we can already, you know sort of grasp with the level of the fitna because the sahaba at the end of the day they were you know, the most pious generation right of the muslims the most pious and yet they were told to hide so imagine us right and they were told to hide from a person who would have kafir written on his head who is a blind one right so they already have this description and yet they're told if he comes in your lifetime hide from it so you got to take all of these hadith together and actually look at it. Uh, but like I said, uh, uh, please continue because uh, I just really wanted to touch on that, and I really want to know where you're getting your interpretations from. Right. So before, because I was going to address that 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 yeah, question near, near yeah. the end of my points. So, so anyway, like as I was saying, like uh, like yes, um, what he comes to, uh, just going through the notes, like. Right. Okay. 
So regarding the 40 days of the Dajawar, which could be take, also taken to mean like uh, 40 years, like each, like just as you've mentioned, like each year will refer to like a, a certain period of time. Like, cause just as the Quran says, like, uh, like a day to Allah is like a, a thousand years. And one hadith that came to my mind when, when you were speaking uh, was uh, Sahih Bukhari uh, 7121, where time will pass really, really quickly because everything is getting modernized and, and, and humanity is getting ready for that latter stage. So, so like that's, that's the way like I personally look it as. And like I said, like, these are like my own personal observations based off my understanding of what I have read so far in the Hadith and uh, in the books of Musical Nomad. Uh, obviously, like, we're all here to learn and we're all, we're all learning about both of our perspective views. So now you mentioned like, like how the Dajjal will, will command, like do, do certain miraculous things. Uh, I think uh, you, we have both mentioned in the stream with uh, RC last night that uh, miracles weave in an impression upon, upon like the fo followers of prophets and that uh, true miracles, just as emphasized with uh, Musa and, uh, and a Pharaoh and his followers, like they, there's a distinction where where Moses cast his rod, and that's the, the the magicians were disproved. So, like I'd say, my main point would be is that when it when a dajjal comes, like it's not gonna be like literal, like like commanding like commanding the sky. Like I think of like the colonialism of like the European powers. Like when they when they fund the missionaries and try to like go and turn the Muslims away from the like we have to we have to remember like from from that same hadith in uh, Sahih Muslim twenty nine thirty seven a okay uh, the Dajjal is said to go around to countries and and exploiting their the resources and we've seen this in like uh, the European countries like exploiting the resources of uh, the nations that they colonized. So this is the way I personally view of the Dajjal commanding like the sky or like the sun. Because, you know, it is only Allah himself who, who is the controller of miracles. Uh, Allah will allow like, like nations to rise and fall for a certain period of time just to test the people of, of their faith and to show the people that that look, a, a messenger is going to come, and this, these are prophecies that are being fulfilled. Uh, now, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, tuwafa, tuwafa, like the two meanings of tuwafa, like his prop, like you, you mentioned, like a uh, tuwafa meaning like his prophet. I'm going to end your prophethood, right? It's completed. Uh, okay. But completed. Oh, okay. So, um. I would say that in response to that, because I've actually read another interpretation as well, is that it can also mean like recall from a mission. That's what I read from uh, Matadi's tafsir. Mm -hmm. But the way the way I I would respond to that is that now not necessarily that we would disagree, in, in, and I'm speaking logistically here. Uh, that it would mean like the completion of a mission, but that would actually in fact. Uh, Prove the death of Esau because when a prophet's mission ends, uh, it ends with their death. It, it doesn't uh, be like taken away, like during during their lifetime, because uh, prophethood is the highest spiritual state that Allah can give mankind, to, and as we've seen through the examples of prophets. Now, just just so uh, just sort of. Sorry, just a just a quick one here because uh, I don't want to be misquoted. Uh, when we're talking about the end or the completion of Isa alayhi salam's prophethood to Bani Israel, I never mentioned that that was the end of his mission, right? Because he had two duties. One is to be a prophet to Bani Israel, 
and the second was to be the Messiah mm. in the uh, in terms of the eschatology of Islam. So, just just uh, so and, and like I mentioned, he was raised up alive. That's the second meaning of the Tawafa. So obviously, you're going to address that. Isn't like a well. mission, like uh, I'm I'm sorry to cut you up, but isn't like just a what? mission, like uh, like the same thing as like prophets, prophethood, because prophets. Are, all prophets have like uh, missions, and and the way I've understood from uh, Allah's book is that that with each prophet, and and similarly from a hadith uh, from uh, Sahih Bukhari, where uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that prophets were sent were sent to their respective nations, and I have been sent to all of mankind. So this implies like uh, previous prophets' missions were were only to their respective nations, and that if you were to like uh, like say that Hadith Isa Islam's mission is now uh, for the Muslims, then it would render uh, that hadith uh, like invalid because. Because it's past, it's past tense uh, being used here. And look at if you look at the hadith, if you look at the hadith, when it talks about the the prophets who were sent to their previous nations, what does it actually mention, right? And when you even look at the tafsir of, the, of this hadith, you would see that these are the, uh, these prophets have been sent to give a message, to or continue the message, right? Depending on whether they were Rasul or or Anbiya. But they would come with a message to their respective nations. Now, what did I say about Isa A.S. in the second coming? I didn't say that he would come as a prophet. I said he would come as a follower of the Sharia of Rasul A.S. So he will come. He will return. And he will descend upon the white minaret in Damascus, and he will, and he will be a follower, uh, someone who will be imp, uh, applying the law that uh, Rasul A.S. came with. So he's not coming back as a prophet. It, you know, so this hadith does not talk about Isa in the second coming because in the hadith is referring to the initial message that prophets are sent with to their respective nations. And indeed, Isa salam, did come with his message to Bani Israel. And as even MGA himself has mentioned, that Isa was Khatam al Anbiya ila Bani Israel. Right? So he was the last of the prophets sent to Bani Israel. Yeah, so. so I want to make a correction on on that point uh, of regarding a reason when Mahmed or some uh, citing uh, Isa, he actually called him the Katamod uh, Kulafa, and 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 he in turn used that uh, title for himself to prove that hey, I am the likeness of Isa. So, but but digressing, um, but I I would still like emphasize that. Uh, uh, like Nabuat and uh, having a, a mission would still like be the same because the, I I know of no place in the Quran where it says that uh, for all all the people mentioned by name in the Quran uh, they had a they had a mission without without uh, prophethood uh, being attached so. Right. So when we go to uh, Heather at Isa Islam, because I'm I'm focusing exclusively on what the verses uh, clearly tell us. Uh, it is clear uh, from uh, chapter three, verse uh, forty nine, that he was sent to the Bani Israel, and in turn, and in my humble opinion, that also means his mission. And and then uh, and this is also simultaneous uh, with Mutu uh, Africa because. Okay. Because not only it, it refers to like uh, the end, like the end of everything, like it also includes like uh, his death. Like I think a, a, a well-known uh, Quranic verse that both of us cites to prove our points is uh, chapter thirty-nine, verse uh, forty-two, <laughs> where uh, tuafa means uh, uh, the taking of a soul, whether in uh, sleep or or in, in death when one's appointed term comes and 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 this is where i like to emphasize that that an appointed term appointed term is used for uh hadra isa because he was sent only for the bunny israel and that it would the quran using Using these facts is that it would actually make it impossible, according to the Holy Quran, for Hadra Isa Islam to come back. And then, furthermore, to add on to uh, my points, uh, 
just as you've mentioned earlier of the Quranic verse, uh, Allah will ask uh, That's uh, did you take, did you tell your followers take take me and my mother for God? Hadar Isa Laysam will reply with Subhanallah. I could only, I could never say that. I can only say like what you told me to say, but, but when, but when you caused me to die because I, to uh, uh, you were watcher over them and that you are the knower of all things. So like my question to you regarding this verse is that why is it that uh, Hadar Isa is um, not knowing like the condition of his followers like after after he passed away? Why why would he tell Allah that he did not know it? Because because you you say that uh, he's going to uh, come back a second time and he's going to clearly see uh, the Christendom around him and he he's gonna be like shocked just to see like how much shirk that they came into and uh just and you have said that uh that isa Islam will die after a period of uh 40 years so he has like uh 40 years to to understand you know what what his followers have become and in my and just to put it bluntly like that would render that point in the verse uh minutes that when when Jesus says, I never told my follower or I never was aware that my followers became like we're taking both uh, me and my mother for for two gods. Like I never I never taught them that and, and that it is only you that is the watcher over them. And that and that I, I am no longer the watcher because you've you've already caused me to die. So uh, that is uh, my understanding of the verse. Uh, and, then, I, and, then, and then I want to answer your question that you've repeatedly put forward regarding a hadith. So, so it's like the way I look at it is it's not like interpretation when I when I when I make my claims from uh, Quran and hadith, but rather I, I say it's like facts it, because it's the fulfillment of because I think uh, let me let me use RC's uh, analogy here. We, we you and I have uh, two different uh, pre presuppositional like the way we look at things, and and in this case, uh, uh, you believe that uh, there are there are prophecies about about the Messiah coming in the latter days that are yet to be fulfilled. Whereas in in my lens, those prophecies have already been fulfilled. So when I mentioned to you these things about like. Uh, chronic verses and hadith, I'm telling you uh, their fulfillments. Uh, look, and as the Quran repeatedly extorts us, we have to look at the heavens and the earth around us if we want if we want to get have a relationship with Allah. And, and especially like in, in the case like at the advent of a prophet, because when these verses uh, were revealed, Allah was telling the Arabs, the Jews and the Christians that look at the signs around you, a true messenger has come. And, and similarly is, is the case with the advent of the promised Messiah, who, whom will be a follower prophet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, go ahead. So what I've noticed in your response uh, was a lot of, uh, in my humble opinion, uh, which sort of answers the question for me in terms of where you're getting your interpretation from. And this is clearly from your own humble opinion. This is Islam is not based on your opinion, and it's not based on yeah, my right. opinion, right? It's based upon the evidences and uh, what people of knowledge have come uh, to agree upon. Uh, you know, not to, not a hundred percent, but in terms of consensus, all right? Because there's always going to be a difference of opinion. But for the majority of the ulama, they have not they have not uh, interpreted any of these verses in light of what you have said, even in recent history, um, of uh, in terms of after the fact, uh, you know, interpretation or exegesis of uh, what these prophecies could mean. Not once in history have any of the ulama said that that the jail would be some group of people like the Illuminati, for example. Um, they try and control everything or trick people or deceive people. We already know this already, you know, Orosu Islam has already told us about normal people uh, 
that will try to um, deceive us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that people will try to deceive us, even mentions that the people will not rest until you become disbelievers like them, right? Sorry. So, you know, when it comes to uh, Christians and atheists and Hindus and Buddhists or whoever uh, trying to take us away from the path of uh, Islam, this is already known to us, right, by normal human beings. Um, so the, the, the gel is definitely uh, something else. And so, and inshallah, in your next response, uh, if you can provide evidence from either the Quran or the Sunnah or the, uh, the people of knowledge um, regarding your interpretation, and that would actually build a case for you rather than your own opinion, because your own opinion would uh, simply doesn't matter to be uh, respectfully um, honest with you uh, and like I said my opinion doesn't matter either which is why I don't speak of my opinion when it comes to Islam um, so when I mentioned uh, and also with MGA he actually does mention his uh, Nabi the loss of the prophets said to Bani Israel he doesn't say Khulafa uh, because Isa um, uh, is a Nabi um, or is actually a Rasul uh, if I'm not actually, if I'm not mistaken, actually I was mistaken. He says Qatam al Rusul ila Bani Israel. If I'm not mistaken, um, he doesn't mention Khulafa. That I know for sure. Um, but it just goes to show you that Khatam here, even by MGA, was interpreted as last. Right. So it, it just kind of draws my attention to why you uh, object to. Uh, Khatam and Nabiyin in chapter 33 verse uh, 40 uh, as meaning last um, and now I know that you have the interpretation of best and so on and so forth but these are all incorporated within the same word uh, and uh, what, other, what other things I mean you, you did talk a lot but it was all out of your uh, own opinion so there's not really much there to address because you essentially just gave me your own opinion and that's not evidence uh, with uh, with all respect um, now what was it that you touched upon can you just mention some of the points uh, that you made uh, because my, my memory is a bit hazy there that's why it's why I write down notes yeah. I'm usually good I'm usually good with remembering all the points but because you gave a lengthy uh, exegesis which came from your own opinion some of the points that I, I, I've lost um, that you were making uh, okay so while it is true that I might have like mentioned some things like based off of like my own understanding and my own opinion now in regards to like like the fulfillment of like things like much of what I say is is based off is based off of what Musa Ghulam Mehmed said, like, 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 this is like why I emphasize that you and I have different lens because you are awaiting the fulfillment of those prophecies, whereas I believe those prophecies have already been fulfilled. Okay. And and you and you lay emphasis that that I should uh, cite uh, previous ulama that that which one of them uh, I said the same things that you said in regards to the latter days, but I kind of feel that this question, this. It begs the question that's that okay like I said like I said the the prop the we believe that uh, things have have been fulfilled and and that and that when you make a prophecy like and its fulfillment has a time no one's is going to like completely like understand like what's going to happen and they'll have to like form like uh, form like opinions based off yeah. their observations until until the fulfillment of that prophecy comes to pass so this is so this is why what i'm presenting you is from the lens of how is of these prophecies being fulfilled okay so all right now when we look at the book because one of the things that you mentioned is that you take your interpretation from the quran and the sunnah and then you mentioned mga all right now from the quran if we just go to the quran for example all right uh, the Quran mentions that if you defer of anything, uh, you know, go to Allah, then His Messenger, right, referring to Rasul Islam, and then the, the people of knowledge, right. That's all it mentions, right, in the Quran. 
So the people of knowledge, right, are the ulama. So obviously, how am I going to appeal to them? I'm going to appeal to the ulama. So on things that we uh, differ with, obviously, uh, for me, it's very explicit in the Quran. It's very explicit for from the Sunnah regarding Isa Islam being identified and his actions and who Amsi Haddajaz is and so on and so forth. I'm not giving my own opinion in any of these. This is all explicit from the Hadith because it is an Aqidah point. And uh, what do you call it? And because, you know, you're not going to agree with me on that, I'm like, okay, let's go to the scholars as well. But you don't go to the scholars because you mentioned repeatedly that you go to the writings of MGA. Now, MGA himself has no authority because he wasn't a learned person. He wasn't a person of knowledge. Right? He never attended or gone into extreme uh, studies. He wasn't a muhaddith, right, to be able to uh, dismiss a hadith as weak uh, regarding the Mahdi. He wasn't. Uh, so, he have that uh, sorry, so. would you apply that same standard to uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because uh, he was uh, illiterate, but he got all of his knowledge from Allah Almighty? And this is and this is similarly is the case with uh Yuza Kalam Ahmed. Um because all prophets they, they get their knowledge. I mean, yes, they're they 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 might have like teachers to, to help him with certain things, but at the end of the day, their knowledge is no matter what level it was like at the beginning, is is completed by Allah himself. So okay. and this is this is why it's like it's like you, you, you mentioned like like scholars a lot, but the thing is, it's like, uh, but I mentioned like Musa uh, Ahmed because he had because all of his uh, claims were 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 based off of divine revelation that 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 goes highly deep into things like very deep meanings that 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 no true person can can ever deny and 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 if he if you say that he was not like a scholar then i would i would highly disagree with you on that because there there have been people that that have praised him for for his knowledge of arabic i believe uh muhammad uh Balevi praised him in the past for for his knowledgeable defense of islam uh people have uh praised praised this book barahini Ahmadiyya, for for heavily defending islam from attacks from christian critics when no one when no one was able to defend uh, Islam at the time. So uh, anyway, going back to like what I'm saying is that he is he is scholarly because because he had knowledge on, on these subjects. He he had he knew he knew a lot of hadith, he, he knew a lot the chronic verses and and he cites things that that no one has ever even considered until until he came and then and then with the explicit mention being fulfilled you know it makes sense to to one who is truthfully looking looking for the truth mm, okay now when it comes uh, to wahi all right now yes you, of course of course was a literate but he is a prophet okay so he's a literate and as the quran mentions if you have a different thing, appeal to Allah and his messenger. Now, the message is very explicit. Of us, right? It doesn't mean any messenger. It means Allah SWT. So you appeal to him. MJ is not mentioned anywhere in these verses. right? It's not appealed to anywhere. It says the people of knowledge. right? Now, the people of knowledge are those who are scholars, right? who have studied the books, who have dedicated their lives to, um, to do these things. Right? Now, MGA did not have that authority. Okay, he was not recognized as an, uh, an imam or a or a scholar, you know, by the majority of the uh, Muslim Ummah. Right, he wasn't accredited with any formal uh, studies that uh, would make you a scholar, especially at the, at the time that he lived in. There would be formal education and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, when you're talking about his prayer, you know, the praise of the Arabic language. Now, uh, with respect, we've heard, um, you know, consistently the recitation of the Quran from uh, people who follow MGA, and with all respect, the, the Tajweed is not the best. 
So when we're talking about the mastery of the Arabic language, from the uh, recitation alone of the Quran, we can see that that is not the case. This is evidence, and if you know, um, whereas when you look at Ahl Sunnah and the those are the people that come from uh, learning how to recite the Quran, the Tajweed is bang on when they've dedicated enough time. Well, if you're talking about um, MGA and receiving revelation, um, you know, here's a quick example. For example, um, here, MGA mentions that he has met Jesus several times in a vision. Now, we also know that he claimed to be Isa alayhi salam, right? Now, you're saying this is a title, but how would you then explain that this is the same man who claimed that Isa alayhi salam is a title, unless this is your own opinion, but I don't believe it is. I believe that you're taking this from MJ's books, that um, if Isa alayhi salam is or Isa or Masih ibn Maryam, or whatever it is, uh, is a, deemed a title, how would you explain that um, he then says uh, that I have met Jesus several times in visions, I have talked with him and asked him about his real claims and teachings. It is an important fact which should not be treated lightly. Jesus condemned the doctrines of the atonement, the trinity and the sonship and thing. All of these, by the way, are mentioned in the Quran. So when you talk about something that he brings that is profound, no, it's not profound. These are all things that are actually denied in uh, more detail than MGA could have ever imagined. Right. Um, in the Quran, we touched upon this, and I actually touched upon this briefly in our discussion in the morning. And I even brought up points that you were not uh, yet aware of. Um, so if you're talking about MGA having this profound understanding of the Quran, um, I, I definitely disagree. So, I, I mean, when you get your chance, um, I would definitely like you to address this quote from MGA about how he talks about He's now, he's and, he's, uh, and him talking to him. So, but, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, let me, I just want to like quickly like uh, just explain. Uh, so, as I've mentioned, uh, you know, I am, I am learning. So, you no, know, I've been, I've been an Abidi Muslim. I've been in like, and, and you are probably learning, still learning too about what like, So, right. So, but that doesn't mean that that the founder himself, is, which I claim to be the Prophet Sasaya, isn't true. But what I'm telling you, just as I told you about Belavir and then people praising Mirza Ghulam Ahmed for for his defense of Islam through through his book uh, Barahini Ahmadiyya, they they praised him for for having extensive knowledge on this. Stuff. So basically, what I'm saying is he knew Islam better than than both of us. Like, okay, so. So let's let's try and squash this um, here, right? You've got the book uh, Barani Hamidiyah. Provide an example of something that is profound knowledge on the Quran or Christianity or whatever it is that you claim that he has. Provide one example, and we'll uh, we'll look at that. Yeah, whatever your strongest point is, bring it. So off the top of my head, yeah. So so Barahini Ahmadiyya Part Five. Uh, this book was written uh, 23 years after uh, Barahini Ahmadiyya part, part 4. And, and Musical Al-Mahid explained this because there were prophecies written in in the in the first four, four books of Barahini Ahmadiyya. And, and these prophecies ha had to be fulfilled over a period of 23 years. And, and they were explicitly uh, laid over in uh, Barahini Ahmadiyya Part 5. And the reason why there was a 23 year gap and a 23 year of, of the gradual fulfillment of these prophecies is, is to lay emphasis on the truthfulness of, of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the Holy Quran was revealed over a period of 23 years. There were certain prophecies that, that were revealed that, that were not manifested until Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's death. So, so Barahini Ahmadiyya Hevel gives one who is truthfully looking to Islam as the true religion as, as a clear proof demonstrated in, in recent history of, of the Holy Quran being fulfilled in prophecies and, and, and its truthfulness being being proven. Sorry, I like this one. Okay, um, I may have missed it. 
what was the because I what I asked from Berani Ahmadiyya was um, evidence or an example where MGA has can be proven to have extensive knowledge on the Quran. So I'm not quite sure where that came in with your response. I may have missed it. Um, but, As I yeah. said, this was this was off the top of my head from from reading uh, Butter Hindi yeah. Ahmadiyya Part Five and and yeah. But when you mentioned but when you mentioned a 23-year uh, gap between prophecies or something, just to emphasize the 23 years of for Rasulullah Islam um, having uh, receiving revelation, this in of itself proves nothing. For example, today I could write something. 23 years I write something else, right? And you know, I make it sound profound, and I say, well, okay, I'm a, I'm a prophet because you know, and what I've done here is pay homage to. The 23 years that Rasul has uh, received revelation, it doesn't really prove the. So when you make a, so like I said earlier, when you make a prophecy, you don't you don't know like how those right. prophecies prof are going to be fulfilled right. until until you see like like until there's it itself, yeah. That's that's why I but a I, prophecy I emphasis on on this part of the okay. subject. But a prophecy is made there and then, right? It's not done in like two parts or something, and because uh, again, correct me if I'm misunderstanding, but it seems like this is written, like like part one of a prophecy is written one day, and then this second part of a prophecy, the same prophecy is like written twenty three years later, and there's a connection between the two. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah. So what I'm saying is that Allah has has given Mirza Ghulam Ahmed prophecies to write down, so that so that the manifestation of these prophecies come to light and that's the truthfulness of Islam is laid bare before before the entire world with with him demonstrating the truthfulness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through his own example as his role of as the promised Messiah and Mahdi. Uh, okay this is confusing me because if uh, MGA was a true prophet he wouldn't need something to so I sort of go back to Rasulullah um, his own prophecies would substantiate himself and remember the criteria of prophecy is that every single one should be fulfilled right has to be fulfilled right now you, according to you he's already he has already fulfilled prophecy of right. Islam. those prophecies that yeah. i've referenced uh, it's it's about like the roles of the latter day uh messiah so like but right. i i throw i throw the the, the word uh, the fulfillment of prophecies in like like in all kinds of different contexts like but they all connect together that that Allah will will give us something we we don't know exactly what it is but then until that thing manifests then then Allah gives us that knowledge that that is exactly my point of view on everything and the point of view of all Ahmadis okay uh, you know it, it still doesn't okay so let me just bring it back to a more fundamental question then um how would you define or how would you uh which criteria would you use to interpret prophecy i would use the way of allah in the in the holy quran uh the like the way sunnah of allah when a prophecy is given like i I don't think there's really much for me to answer given that I've already uh, said that, said it like repeatedly over a period of time. Like, like I'm just going to basically like uh, squish it down in a summary that, that it's the fulfillment of prophecies that I am focused on. Okay. And that, and that All right. So let me break it down then. Let me break it down because you, f you feel like you've repeated yourself and you have because I haven't really understood what the point you were making is because when I asked for an example of MGA having a profound understanding of the Quran, you haven't actually provided an example uh, of him um, having a profound understanding of the Quran. You were just talking about him making prophecy, which is not what I asked. Um, but, you know, we'll leave that off now because, you know, you said it's off the top of your head. So maybe you, well, don't, remember, well, right, maybe you right. don't remember for of an example. But I mean, I could, about, I could cite other examples as well. But I mean, yeah. these are these are on prophecies. I mean, well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go on to prophecy. Like, well, I would I'm say that is, in terms of like you know how we how you and I practice Islam, it, there's no difference. I mean, we we still there's 
We believe in the Holy Quran. Uh, we believe in the authentic books of uh, Hadith. We we believe in basically all the pillars of Islam. Like, there's really no difference between us except on the identity of the Messiah, as okay. well as like like, right. our, like our own conflicting. It. So that's why I say that yes, he was knowledgeable on Islam. But like I said. I gave you something off the top of my head. I, I can give you more things off oh, the top. That's fine. Yeah, but what you get okay. What you gave me off the top of your head wasn't what I asked for. That, that that's what I'm saying. That, that's, what I asked. that's fine. That's fine. It's yeah. just you know, I felt I needed. No, no, that's fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. If you like, like I said, you know, we're, we're both human. If we can't remember something off the top of, from our studies, that's not a problem. But it's because you brought it up. Obviously, I questioned you on it. You know, you brought it up that MGA was uh, profound, and people were praising him of his of his knowledge of the Arabic language and his understanding of the Quran. So I was like, okay, give me an example. I do, I do, I do so, remember now. Like, uh, good, all right. Like, okay, so what? Like, it's not going to be like I would say like a specific example, like like exactly a reference, but it's actually a book that I would suggest for you to read. Since since you are a native Arabic speaker, you know a lot more Arabic than me. Like I'm, I'm only a beginner. I, I'm trying to learn it, but it takes time. Yeah, yeah. Course, but good. a book that I would suggest that you read if you want to test his knowledge of Arabic is read a book called uh, Ijazi Ijazi Ahmadi. Uh, this is a book written by, which is uh, translated to Miracle of Ahmed in in English, and uh, this book was written in response to a challenge by uh, scholars who, who told him that since you claim to know so much Arabic. Right, right. We're gonna write us a book, and we will write a book better than yours. And here's a good old map, and said, "Okay." And then, with the guidance of divine revelation, he he wrote a book in Arabic uh, called Ijazi Ahmadi, and and he lays much emphasis on the on the points of of like how many of his signs were fulfilled. Like, I'm, by the way, I'm I'm talking exclusively about his knowledge of Arabic. It's in of itself because. Because then you could keep this in mind when you look at his analysis of Quranic verses in his books. Excellent. All right, that's great. So his his because you mentioned that you know he did this through divine intervention. Now, if I look at his book and I put, and I point out a grammatical error, for example, right now we know under divine intervention he will not make an error because his Allah is without error. So if he's getting divine intervention, he will not make a single grammatical mistake in this writing. So if I find one grammatical mistake, what would you say? I, okay, so if you were to say like a one grammatical mistake, like like I haven't read I haven't read the book myself, so I'm not going to necessarily comment on that. Oh yeah, but, okay. I'll tell you why you should. Because, look, because, because when you make who it, who am I to say like as someone who is like probably like. Not really that much experience with. Earth. Take it, take it, take it to well, an expert. I will, take, I will say, but what I will say though is that, based off my understanding of history, is that no one was able to really like give like a much better Arabic book, and and of course you can you can investigate uh, for yourself, but in terms of my understanding, uh, no one. But you gotta no be very careful really with your claims. Be, yeah, well, you gotta be very careful with your claims because when you're saying this is divine intervention and uh, oh, ultra right. and I was ultra, something else as yeah, well. Uh, yeah, because no, hold on, just because because over here in the comments, uh, Ultron uh, says it is inspired, not a dictation. Now that sounds like a Christian comment, right? It's, from the from the language that is being used, it is inspired because I mean, this is what the Christians. Well, like, uh, inspiration just, is one of the one of the in, uh, definitions of. All right, but inspiration by Allah means you won't make mistakes because Allah is inspiring you to say something. Now, when you say something under inspiration of uh, by, under inspiration by, uh, of Allah, you will not make mistakes. We're not saying that, uh, that Allah told him to write these words, right, verbatim. We're not saying that. I never made that comment. Now, and then he says, okay, now he says, read my next comment, all right? And his next comment was, Allah gives the idea and he expands on it. Uh, right. Where does that come from? MJ doesn't, doesn't make the, uh, the uh, actually, I'm not sure like, he does make that kind of what do like, they call it and he's saying okay, any well, error where right, hold on, hold on. because he's saying now any error so already people are actually trying to already justify the errors in this book so it's getting to a point now where even i don't need to read this book right in order to point out the errors 
based off the comments or from Ultron, so he's already saying, okay, they're wrong. Well, are you certain though but, that they have read the book though? No, well, I mean the way the, uh, you're right. I he, he like, may, forget, forget about those comments, brother. I, I I'm saying no, no, that no, no. It's, but it's, it's just it's read just read the book for yourself. Yeah. No, no, I will, I will do. But I'm talking about when if I find a grammatical error because at the end of the day, when we're talking about uh, MGA being inspired, and especially when there's a challenge being put forward to a prophet, right? And that challenge has to be met, right? Because this will be an evidence for his prophethood. So when when MGA is accepting this challenge and saying, yeah, no problem. All right, I'll do what it, I'll do what you I'll accept this challenge because I'm going to prove I'm a prophet. Now we know that prophets have come with signs of their prophethood, with evidences of their prophethood. So if this Arabic is supposed to be sublime, right, and and under inspiration, then it should have no errors because it's being inspired by the one who makes no errors. Right, so we both claim that uh, the Quran yeah. has no errors in it, even though so. you'll have like some Christians and ignorant ex-Muslims that say that <laughs> yeah. that there's there's a lot of grammar. Like I know uh, I have an ex-Muslim friend uh, from Iran. Uh, he he tries to say that there are several grammatical errors in the Quran, but mm. yeah, but we know but, there isn't. Okay, but it, but when when divine revelation is said, like it's it's said in a very like very clear concise eloquent manner like it, it strikes the heart like like just well, as I mean, it is described in and in, in a hadith uh what like is a, a, like a ringing of a so going back no no no, to, no hold on hold on uh just because when we're talking about the expertise of the arabic language now when we're talking about expertise it's not just the grammar we have to when i look at this book it has to have what is known as balagha right eloquence as you mentioned now balagha in arabic is a very high level of Arabic, right? And, and even then, it's not as, as good as the Quran. So, when we're talking about the expertise of the Arabic language, when I read this book, I should be seeing balagha, right? I should be seeing eloquence within the Arabic language. If I don't see that, then there is no way it's inspiration. Not at all. Because Allah is the most eloquent, right? Right. And when the Rasul and we don't, we don't Salam, disagree on this, on this okay, point. Yeah. But also, but also when Rasulullah is Islam, because you mentioned quickly the ringing of the bell, you know, first of all, it's not the ringing of a bell, it's like, right? so it's uh, likened to it. Well, that's but, what I meant. Okay, that's what no, I meant. Sorry. But you've got to be very careful because Christians like to pick on this. If they watch the stream, they'll be like, oh, look, the ringing of the bell, because there's a hadith of the shaitan, you know, the right, bell. That's kind uh, of sorry, the point not the hadith that of no, but that's kind of the point that I make. Uh, right, but I'm very careful because I know. Talking about our writings. I mean, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying no offense. No, 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 that's fine. But I'm saying, what do you call it? Well, we've got to be very careful with what we say, right? Right. Um, especially when we know that Christians might be watching and stuff, because especially when we've got two people that identify as Muslims, other people from other faiths like to watch that and say, look, these people are disagreeing with each other and make a whole deal out of it. But, um, like I said, when it comes uh, to this, even when it comes to things that are not Quran or anything, like even when Rasulullah was uh, getting uh, wahi from Allah about information that's you know outside of the Quran, he would tell it as it's been revealed. He would tell you exactly what Allah has revealed to him. Okay? Um, he wouldn't in and when it comes to the interpretation even when we look in Sahih Bukhari the, the chapter of uh, the prophetic uh, what do you call it uh, expert, you know, tafsir if I'm not mistaken it's book 65 but um, you would see that when he's given this tafsir there is no discussion on whether this is correct or not we know that this is why you know that this is divine uh, revelation that this is true end of story Right. So there is never any mistakes, regardless of the form of revelation. So even when we talk about prophetic dreams, right, there is no error in these prophetic dreams. And these prophetic dreams, actually, when you, even, when you look at the Rasulullah uh, Islam prior to him receiving the revelation of uh, Surat al-Alaq in the cave, he, he first had prophetic dreams. That was the first form of revelation that he would have. And they would happen exactly as he dreamt them, right? So it wouldn't be some sort of interpretation it would happen as he dreamt them, right? So everything that comes to the prophets is true. Every claim that they make would be backed up with evidence. Allah would support them with that evidence. So this is why I want to say, in terms of this book, uh, what's it called again? Ajazul? It, it, I can write it down in the comments yeah. too. Like yeah, sure, writing. no worries, no worries. I uh, or, yeah, Jazzy, just, and, Jazzy, yeah, I can Jazzy. send it to you on Discord. Yeah, just send it to me on Discord. But, um, yeah, I'll send you the original Arabic. Uh, alhamdulillah, that's good. So when you when when MJ accepts this challenge, right? 
then he should he has to meet that challenge in order to prove his profithood right he, would you agree or not yeah and and he himself agreed agreed to that certain standard which is the whole point of why he wrote that book in the first place of course so now we can t now we've got something that we can test so for example now we can do a, draw a parallel because now we're talking about the arabic language when the arabs of uh Quraysh were mocking god of islam and trying to say that he got this uh, book from somewhere else or this recitation from somewhere else and so and so and so forth what did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do in chapter 2 verse uh, 23 and 24 Right. He said to them, if you believe that this is from uh, other than Allah, then produce a chapter like it, right? Now, this is a challenge that's put forward. And for 1,400 years, people have tried. And no one has been able to do it, right? And, and subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, of course. And they never will be able to, which is why, and subhanAllah, look at the boldness of the claim of the Quran. It says, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, and you will never be able to do it. And you know, when you realize this, surely you know, fear the the fire whose fuel is man and stone, uh, and is prepared for the disbelievers. So, it not only is it presenting the challenge, it's also making a claim that you will never be able to meet this challenge. Right. So, likewise, this is the sort of challenges that Allah will do. Right. And likewise, when we look at um, um, the the other prophets, whenever they would challenge uh, their prophets with something, Allah will meet that challenge. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned earlier with Musa alayhi salam and his staff when he tossed it, uh, what do you call it, in front of the magicians. What did the, you know, that, that was the challenge, you know, my magician is against yours. We think you're a magician. So, you know, come and battle our magicians and see whose magic is greater. And then when he does it, when Allah and uh, Musa alayhi salam goes and he tosses his thing, Allah meets that challenge by showing them reality, that this is not an illusion. Musa staff is not an illusion, like, like your illusion. Musa staff actually turned from a wooden staff to an actual snake. Hence, why the ma magicians then, for, you know, forsook uh, their magic, forsook Fir'aun, and bowed and said, "We believe in Allah," because now the evidence is, has been made clear to them. Allah has uh, met their challenge with something that they cannot um, deny. So likewise, and this is how Allah has uh, uh, done, uh, you know, done with all the prophets. He's always given them solid evidences that cannot be denied. Which is why, when we apply the term kafir, we're talking about that in linguistically, we're saying the term kafir means someone who who covers something, right, and rejects. So the people who are disbelievers or are deemed disbelievers are the ones that cover the truth and reject the truth, right, linguistically speaking. And this is why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala calls those people who when their messenger comes to them and they disbelieve, he calls them kuffar because they've already recognized the clear evidences that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has manifested through his prophets. Absolutely. And they, and they still, um, what do you call it, deny it. So now we have something that's in parable, right? Now we have a claim that uh, MJ has written a book in Arabic to display his expertise uh, of the Arabic language through divine intervention whether it's inspiration or dictation whichever it is what he is it's even more direct all right this is direct revelation now so if he's writing this book through direct revelation then they shouldn't there should not be a single error in that book not a, not a single one it should be as pristine as the quran in terms of the arabic language because the yeah. arabic language is the 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 the, 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 the the epitome or the maximum of the Arabic language is the Quran. So the only way is, the only way we can now say that this book is something that's come from divine revelation if it matches the Quran, because now we're talking about the epitome of the Arabic language. Would you agree? Yeah, because because as I said, as I mentioned earlier, that's uh, if he were to. Let's say that he's he's from God. He would have to prove that 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 his Arab Arabic is absolutely eloquent and it, and it's absolutely from Allah. And in my humble opinion, even from reading the English translation of most of that book itself, you know that that book is solid. Like I like, probably want to like I, I mean not, I say that for, you won't for be able to you, you won't be able to from a translation. Like, come on. You know, if if it's a if it's an Arabic I mean, book, it's an Arabic I mean, challenge. The translations, I mean, the translations. It's based off like they. It's based off of like theology, and and they interpret 
the original Arabic words or Urdu words, just based off of what is being said in the in the context. So, so this is why by the time I get more proficient with Arabic, I'm actually very excited to to have a read of that book for myself. Inshallah. And you yeah, yourself so, will. So that's why. I, right. So I I would say like uh, as part of my point, like because since since this is the criteria that that we are both laying down is that is that i think you would agree with this as well is that you should read the the original arabic in 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 that book of ajazi amadi from from the lens of the holy quran like in terms of grammar like uh how it is inspired uh you know same interpretations like just heavy emphasis see you know when I I'm I'm gonna go off a little bit off topic a little bit, but when when I say that Mirza Ghulam Mahmed uh, like commentates on the Holy Quran a lot, there's a reason why all ninety of his books is called Ruhani Khazain, because it, they are they are spiritual treasures that that give like the true meanings of the Holy Quran. You see, uh, and 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 for those things to be like tested. Clear, clear evidences need to be presented, and and and, and I encourage like anyone who watches this stream, like including you, brother, and, and including myself, uh, that that let's let's read his books together. Let's and and let's distinguish, and then let's let's find the truth. Like Alhamdulillah, you know, I found I found the truth like th through reading reading his books. So that's my claim, and I'm, and I, I mean that's subjective, but. But and then Rusik might might say that I I haven't found any satisfaction. But but we'll see. Inshallah. This is why I said in, in my stream with you last night with RC Apologist that if if you only read our books, brother, with with sincerity, you'd you'd be an Ahmadi Muslim. And I say this because like I like I, I remember watching like a video of yours like responding uh, to uh, Gondo Gondo and apostate prophet. Uh, that was actually a pretty solid defense of of. Koreat, like that. I was like, "Wow, that's impressive!" And I just hope, I just hope he applies that same standard to, to uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's books, because he he will see the truth. And then, and yeah, well, that's the, my humble uh, opinion, of course. No, of course, yeah. I mean, we are supposed to be uh, doing um, uh, some streams on the Qur'an, but uh, that's been uh, delayed for multiple reasons, personal life and professional life as well That's sorry my life. nephew and niece are knocking on my window and i'm waving at them no it's for the fun always um now when um you know when we talk about the books of uh, mj of course i'm going through them right so i've actually started off with rohania khazayim because that's the first one i was kind of introduced to uh, so this is something, you know, if you want to pick out a couple of examples from there in a future discussion, we can go through it, right? Because, uh, it, you know, I found it so far very easy to respond to a lot of things that uh, MGA has claimed. And obviously I've had help because I'm not going to do it all by myself, right? And uh, we already know that people are claiming that some of our panelists are twisting things out of... Uh, uh, what do you call it, context and everything, but we address them, you know, and unfortunately we haven't had the people to come on and actually challenge us directly there and then uh, regarding these claims that we twist the sources, but who knows, maybe after Ramadan when we do a few more streams, uh, people will actually come and correct us on the spot. Um, and we're more than happy to be corrected. Um, if we're saying something that's wrong, well, come and correct us, it's not a problem, but uh, pro provide the evidence, it's not about opinion. So for um, so just kind of going back uh, to the topic. So we've agreed now, right, on this challenge of MGA that he accepted. There is a certain criteria to be held. And if we find that that, criteria, that that challenge has failed in any way, then this cannot be inspiration of God. And if it's not inspiration of God by the person who's claimed it is, then there is only one thing that we can conclude from that. So Alhamdulillah, I mean, uh, at least we've agreed that there is a standard that we can measure uh, MJ's prophethood by. Um, I think because I, you know, I I do pay attention to the comments. Um, yeah, I, is, it okay? is it okay? Newspaper yeah. allegation that 
like yeah, which well, I this... myself have challenged you on because uh, Corum and I, and I gave you the time parts too. Uh, Corum and I, uh, because you know I'm not an Urdu speaker, but but Corum is, and uh, if if you'll, and you objected uh, last night saying that, but but why well, can't? But I should be in there so that I may make a claim, and, and maybe 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 Corum and I will do a future stream with you, and then we'll yeah, actually sure. go over just so you can see like. Like the way the way I'm seeing you is that uh, you have a high amount of like uh, skepticism, but but when it comes to like things that you know we both already believe to be true, Islam, the uh, Nabuwat of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know you're you're pretty solid, and 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 my claim, no, <laughs> my my uh, claim is my claim is is that if you were you like to like do the same thing with our literature, like. You you would be become like an almighty. Like that's why I, I don't under understand like you know like why if if you didn't like read much of our books like how 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 could you like have like no offense of course the audacity to 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 say these kind of things like like you have to uh, you remember what. that that when somebody like just as you said like like in regards to hadith. When we or any 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 like uh, thing that anybody cites, you have to know what the book is talking about. Similarly, I say the same thing about Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. Like you have to apply. There there cannot be a double standard. We have to be consistent here, right? Mm -hmm. You agree with that, brother? I agree. But remember, recall what I said earlier, right? The claim of prophet, and especially when you touch upon prophecy, what did I mention? I said that every single prophecy must be fulfilled, right? Now, and I'm mentioned that you claim that he has already fulfilled these prophecies but when i go and look at who we both agree is already a messenger which is Rasul, we can see that from his description he or mj hasn't fulfilled any of these prophecies but that he of the of the people that he claimed to be and mahdi and Messiah and so on and so forth he didn't he didn't do this right from the wahi of Rasul, Right? So when we talk about divine uh, revelation, we already have this. And by the way, when we talk about the Quran, for example, when it came to chapter 2, verse 23, do you think I just accepted it? No, I actually tested it myself, you know, because we are taught to, to, to test these things. And the reason why I tested it myself is to achieve that uh, extra level of certainty, right, in what I believe. And so that when people kind of come and confront me with certain questions, I can answer them because I've made that study, right? So, you know, everything that I speak about, I've actually studied and I've been skeptical about or approached from a skeptical uh, point of view to then uh, be able to respond to things in a better way. So as part of self-growth, right? So when I have uh, like challenged you on interpretation of hadith or Quran and stuff, and just, I haven't really been skeptical Right. I've just been asking you, where do you get your interpretation from? And you have already answered me by saying it repeatedly that this is all from your own humble opinion. And I've repeatedly well, said I've to also, you, I've also, you've also said cited that, uh, NGA. The of, right. The fulfillment yeah. of, because that's the lens I'm looking right. at it. Like, 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 yes, yes, Mirza Qalam Ahmed does explain every single one of these points, but I haven't gotten to those parts personally for but 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 based off what I've understood from from the theology that that I'm studying, you know, this is this is what I'm going to like deduce here. Hmm. So okay. Don. But when, when we're talking about okay, so let's let's, I, let's. I was going to say something. Go ahead. All right. Sorry. So when it comes to the interpretation of the Quran, now we obviously know that the first step in terms of interpreting the Quran is interpreting the Quran from the Quran, right? Now. When we look at you know verses pertaining to prophethood and criteria of prophethood and you know uh, our aqidah points, because you actually mentioned earlier as well, this is what I actually wanted to sort of touch upon, is that we you hold the same six pillars of faith that we do. The answer to that is no, right? Because the six pillars of faith um, regarding the uh, the books, for example, right? Uh, actually, we'll start from the first one, right? Belief in Allah. Now, when we talk about the six pillars of Iman, we have to understand that the belief in Allah also extends to the Rububiyah of Allah. Now, the Rububiyah of Allah extends to his miracles, to his actions, right? What, how he manifests his power in the, in the world. 
Now, when we talk about miracles, you don't believe that Allah actually does miracles in terms of breaking the natural order. You believe that he will do miracles uh, in terms of doing things within the natural world. And even when I asked you earlier about Adam Alayhi Salaam, you even mentioned that Adam Alayhi Salaam, you don't believe. Now, I don't know if this is the view of the Ahmadi community, but for you, at least for you personally, you don't believe that Adam Alayhi Salaam was the first based, Adam. Based off the tafsir of uh, Mirza okay. Bashiruddin Mahmoud Ahmed, the second Khalifa of yeah. the Ahmadiyya. Okay, so what does what does Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mention? What does Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mention? Yeah, about Adam Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, he, he says he says in like he says in hadith that's what that Adam was created and then that's and that a woman was created out of the out of the rib and yeah. and that's my understanding. Yeah. So how, how how does a woman get created out of the rib from evolution? Because when when you when you say like certain things like for example like everything is said like in, in terms of the understanding that that someone has over a period of time of what what divine revelation has given that person now in terms of like our our understanding of the subject this is based off of even the fulfillment of of many signs coming back now it's not just prophecies here now we're talking about like like scientific discoveries like scientific findings and you do know what we have observed in the in the heavens like heavens and the earth because we we have better technology than than we have in the, in the past now now i know what you might say you might say is rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wrong then and, I, and i'm gonna say no and, and you might say that well then that's a contradiction but i, I would say that no, like, well, we, let's go we, first step by step. We believe in Adam Islam as a prophet, and and we believe and we believe in his wife as well. But but they were not like the first human beings. But you see, like, they. However, they are part of a progeny of prophets and their nations that came after for a period of uh, six thousand years. Like, oh, wait, hold on, because. Hold on, hold on. Just, just I, I need to ask you about this six thousand years. Where did you get this six thousand years from? Please don't tell me it's from the like, like a period, like a period, like a period of time, like a period of time. Like so when I say you... like six thousand, six thousand years or four thousand years, like okay. So when I say like this 6, period of time, I'm, I'm referring exclusively to to the progeny of of prophet, because you know we are all like children of Adam, me. and 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 all the prophets are descended from from Adam, like in a way, like. Are you telling Adam, me, are you telling me that the 6,000 years is from Adam Islam, till now? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's literally what I'm saying. Cause that's, that's the era that, that we live in because with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being like to perfection of of the progeny of the Adam, because this this is this because we because this is heavily based off of the Quran, because oh, right? Because I, mean, I mean, no, I'm I'm just saying I'm just saying in terms of Adam himself. Even if we disagree that that uh, whether or not he's the first human, we do okay, agree okay. on the, the, one, one point no, no, that, no, no, that no, 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 because of his, all right. Well, first of all, we know that in the Quran, Allah mentions that He created Adam with His own hands. How would you interpret this? If you're saying that he's just a project from a progeny, we know that he has no mo mother, no father. He was created with Allah's, you know, from Allah's hands, shaped, molded, and then he breathed into him life. And he even gives in uh, chapter three, verse 59, the similitude of Adam. Uh, the similitude of Jesus is like that of Adam. How would you interpret this when you are claiming in the same breath that you believe in the Quran? And this is why I say you don't actually believe in the pillars of Islam because you have a misunderstanding or you have a you know very flawed understanding of the Quran. How would you say that Adam is the progeny or has a, is, you know is, is birthed from people that came before him, but yet the Quran mentions completely something completely different that he he and Jesus are, are similar, right? That they were created from dust and, and Allah said to them, "Be and they were." How would you? How would you okay, explain so, <clears throat> so, 
the verse that Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed, uh, our second Khalifa, cites with regards to this is that how Allah intends to create like a Khalifa, a vice jurant in the earth. Allah said this in the Quran. It, right? I mean, we don't we don't disagree on this, but and and for this certain part, like Adam Islam was made like like a prophet. Okay, I know I'm deviating a little bit, but mm -hmm. but he is not like like the first man. And and I I say this because because he man, humanity is because we have to take into account like uh what okay. like uh, hang on hang on a second uh, hang on uh, a second uh, uh, it's only because, because, because you keep going to the Allah already, Allah already mentions that that he will create a vice jurant in the earth so like to me that that would imply that mankind has already been been like made like like Allah Allah also says uh, in uh, chapter uh, twenty one, I believe that that he created every living thing uh, from water, and then in terms, of, and then for humankind, uh, you know, when Allah mentions this, like he obviously like amidst like like the intervals like in evolution, like I'm saying in in our in our understanding, and that with like some like scientific like findings like 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 the the material that we are made is like the same as the material that has been like made in stars made in the universe like same same thing as like clay like but okay so on this on this particular point like like in terms of the materials like we don't disagree on but uh, what i'm saying what i'm saying is that allah has gradually raised man to to the status of Khalifa, Vice to be the leaders of of the universe to carry out the will of Allah, and 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 you can't like have this like to like like one creation like all of a sudden like one creation like it, it has to like happen over a period of time like and now okay. when I mentioned to you last night uh, mm -hmm. previous atoms like. This is based off of the vision of a saint that Musa Bashir, Bashir Dean Mahmoud Ahmed cited in, in his tafsir. So this is technically something that's like not really new. Oh, it's very new. But I'm just saying like he cited a saint, like. No, someone who, no, 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 no. You, okay. let's be very precise. He's citing someone who claimed to be a saint or someone who's been attributed as a saint. Who is this person? Who is the saint? I don't remember the name off the top of the off, off the top right. of my head, but I will yeah. send it to you on Discord. Yeah. No, uh, no, that's fine. If you want to, uh, if you want to prov uh, provide the evidence later, so that is not an issue whatsoever. But we're talking about what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying. Now, when you say Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has already told us what we are made from, right? We are made from the dust of the earth. Okay, so we're not made from the dust of the stars or whatever it is that these. Uh, atheistic scientists come up with, right, to try and explain our origin, right, because they ain't got a clue, right, because that's where you're coming from, actually. You're coming from that scientific uh, theory, which is not even proven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already... It's, it, we believe in the fulfillment of science and that they actually... Uh, test, science, test the okay. To the fulfillment. That's, that's, that's no, basically no, no. the lens I'm looking at it through. What you're actually doing is interpreting the Qur'an through the lens of science, which is unproven because science always changes, okay? Um, that's what you're actually doing. Now, what Allah has, subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually uh, said to us is very clear, that we are created from the dust of the earth. And this is why when he gives the similitude of Isa to Adam, he mentions the, the commonality between them, that they were created from dust, and then he commanded, kun for your kun. Why did he give them to the similarities? Because they were created in a supernatural way. And now Allah has created mankind in four different ways. He has created uh, a man without uh, any parents. He has created uh, a, a, a woman from a man. He has created a man from only a woman. And he's created mankind from parents. Right? These are the four methods that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created uh, mankind within the Quran that he has uh, revealed to us, right? And as we know. Um, so... When Allah subhanahu wa because you still didn't answer this, right? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he created Adam with his hands, 
how do you explain this verse while almost while simultaneously saying that he, Adam Islam came from a line of previous Adams? How do you explain this verse? Okay, so with evidence, sorry, sorry, sorry. With, 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 with like the with evidence, similitude of Isa Islam being being made from dust, like no, 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 not that, not that. Wait, you mentioned. Okay. Yeah, no, I said the, the one I want you to address is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala me, uh, mentions that he created Adam with his hands, right? Okay. Yeah. Right, so he created Adam with his hands. How do you explain this verse with evidence, right, that supports your interpretation, um, while simultaneously saying that Adam came from a progeny of previous Adams? Okay. So, when I... Like, obviously, we don't interpret like like Allah creating like out of with His hands like literally, but but the way that Musa, right? I'm I'm putting yeah. heavy emphasis on this because yeah, five stuff that you never heard of before. No, I've heard but, this because this is an uh, an Ashari position in terms of well, the obviously. hands not being not being literal. But you know, it's. Allah can't like literally like have physical hands like the way that we oh, no, do. No, so instead, no, so no, 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 no. like the raising like of a of a prophet, like and no, and this no. similar standard is is applied to like all all prophets in general. Because when Adam when Adam is mentioned first as as like I said the first Adam of of this progeny of the last uh, six thousand years, it is mentioned that Allah created him. With his hands, as part of a progeny that he's he will use to to guide humankind out of darkness uh, and guide humankind to perfection, which ultimately comes up to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, and then in regards to like the dust, the the clay in the earth. Now, like I said, I've mentioned it earlier that that I usually look to science, like. So it's because because we are made of the same material. I mean, I mean, you mentioned that you don't you don't believe in science, which which is fine. Oh, I mean, we, I we never said have that. Like I never a, said that. Well, no, I'm just said, saying on, on these particular points. Like, yeah, I agree that that science isn't perfect. It's not it's not as perfect as the Quran, but it is part of like humankind, like advancing their their own knowledge, and part of. Part part okay. of advancing their own knowledge, and it is said in the latter days that humankind will will eventually advance their own knowledge. Okay, well, I mean, Subhanallah, Allah says this in what they call it in the in the first uh, bunch of verses, right? That He revealed to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So He actually mentions the Surah Al Alaq, Allama Linsana Ma Lam Yalam. So this is not something that comes from prophecy. This is something that Allah has already mentioned to us from the first revelation. Given to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He taught man what He knew not. So we already know that you know Allah has taught us the and the the, the advancement the advancements the advancements in everything that we know, right? And yet we know very little. But when we're talking about you know because you mentioned the dust of the stars right being somehow part of our creation you know uh, or the reason of us coming to be this is clearly against the quran and the sunnah this is something and that's not thing that's not um even hinted to in the quran and the sunnah so this is why i'm like no which is straight up no okay like, like um, i spoke to you last night like like I'm not like a, a young earth creationist. I am actually a theistic evolutionist. So and and the verse that I often cite as like proof of my claims is uh, chapter twenty one, verse thirty, where where it says that Allah had like everything in the heavens and the earth were once like closed up, and then Allah opened them up. Mm -hmm. Which, but that it, doesn't point to evolution. An explicit like mention of the Big Bang like fourteen thousand years ago. Yeah. Okay. But I, I mean, that, like I don't know what your fourteen point five million yeah. verses, but I mean, I just know that you're you're a young Earth creationist. No, no. No, you're not. Okay. No, okay. No. Then I was so, all right. So the thing is, when it comes to the Big Bang theory, remember it's just one of many theories, right? Now, when what this is the danger when we uh, apply a certain. Uh, theory to the Quran. So, for example, let's say today we've got the Big Bang theory still as one of the most prominent explanations for the origin of the universe, right? 
But remember that Big Bang Theory doesn't put God behind it, right? And when you actually, and this is why uh, the astrophysicists have actually tried to come up with things like the multiverse theory to explain how the Big Bang came to be. Now, the Quran gives a completely different explanation. It says Allah is the originator. Yeah? So he is the originator of this heavens and the earth. So science doesn't agree right, with the Quran. Right? Yes, there may be things that may hint to and we might be like, because I used to be like you. I used to be like, oh, look, the Quran is talking about the Big Bang. And then I realized, wait, hold on, the Big Bang doesn't take God into it at all. So, <laughs> you know, it, it just because science is very limited, right, uh, to just the naturalistic world. They, it doesn't know anything about how the Big Bang came to be. They're just like, oh, poof, Big Bang. They didn't like the poof. So they had to put something behind the poof to explain it. But then they have to put something behind it, you know, and they just just go into a lot of problems. What Allah tells them very simply, but they are similar to Allah, right? Allah is the originator of the heavens and the earth. Very simple. And and this is where all our philosophical arguments come from, like uh, the contingency, uh, contingency arguments, uh, Kalam arguments and all of that, which supersede the Big Bang theory, right? Because it's more logical. So when it comes to the interpretation of the Quran, you've got to be very careful not to attach theories to the Quran, because let's say 20 years from now, when, uh, for example, if the Big Bang theory is no longer the prominent model, right, for the origination of the universe, do you know what people are going to be saying? They'll be like, well, Muslims said 20 years ago that the Quran was talking about the Big, the Big Bang, and well, now we've just shown that they're wrong, because the Big Bang is now debunked as a theory. So that means the Quran is wrong, therefore Islam must be wrong. So do you see the dangers of having to attach something that's a theory to what Allah is deeming as a fact? Now, when it comes to everything created from water, well, if you look at the human body, yes, it's, most of it is water, right? When you look at anything, most of it is water, okay? So um, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about, uh, you know, the creation making every living thing well adam is made of living thing and he's mostly water right because he was again sculpted like pottery you need water for pottery right now here's something when it comes to the adam being the first man as well remember the conversation right? allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says i will place on the earth a khalifa right he always said i will place on the earth a khalifa and the angels at this point they, they haven't seen man yet Right? They say, oh Allah, will you place upon the earth people that will, you know, a creation that will shed blood and everything, and cause uh, fitna and whatnot. Now we have to ask why are they assuming this stuff, right? And obviously when we go to the uh, extra Quranic uh, tradition, we realize we have the tradition where the angels have already fought the jinn on earth and put them to the islands on, on the earth and that's where they are. And, uh, and so on and so forth, right? So they've already seen this sort of bloodshed and corruption, so that, hence the assumption of what the next creation will do. And Allah responds to them, you know, I know what you do not know. And then Allah creates Adam and he commands the angels to bow to him, right? Uh, and this is about a uh, prostration of respect, this is not a uh, prostration of worship. So, and they do that, and obviously we know Iblis uh, refuses to, to do that. Now, when you talk about Allah's literal hands, it was very interesting um, when you denied their literal hands because you were like, well, he hasn't got hands like us. This has never been the Muslim claim, right? Because we also affirm that Allah is unlike his creation. So when we say hand, we don't say he's got five fingers and a palm and flesh and blood or whatnot. We don't apply any anthropomorphism to him. Uh, and again, like I said, this is an Aqidah point. So you need to really understand uh, the six pillars of human in depth. Uh, before claiming that you have shared the same uh, views. Um, we say that he has a hand because this is what he, he has hands, because this is what he affirms for himself, right? So we're going to say, okay, khalas, you say that you have hands, you have hands. But we understand that it's not like creation. So we have no idea what, what it's like, right? His hands, what they're like. Well, we know he uh, sculpted Adam with his own hands. Now, when we look at Shaitan, we know that he was jealous of Adam, right? And he even boasts and says, look, you created me from fire, you created me from uh, the earth, right? And this is when Allah says, you know, when you're not uh, prostrate to what I've created with my own hands. So if we take it in a metaphorical sense and say, for example, that Allah created Adam with his own, with his power, 
for example. Well, Allah created shaitan with his power. So if Allah created Adam salam, with his power and he created shaitan with his power, why is shaitan being jealous and even boasting that, oh, look, you've created me from fire, you've created him from thing that we've both done with power, you know? So you've got this pride and arrogance and all of that. So we take the hands of Allah to be literal and they are not like any anything from his creation and anything that we imagine, it's not that, right? So this is very clear in terms of the hands of Allah. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll end it there so you can respond. Sure. So with regards to the creation of Ahmed, I mean, I'm sorry, Adam. Adam, I saw him, yeah. Yeah. Adam was infused with a nature of humidity. Uh, you know, like, like let's just let's just cite for example, like, you know, cite like the Jewish version, created in the image of God. By all sites, most importantly from the Quran, that mankind was was created to worship Allah. So, so this is what I mean by image of God, and and when the and when Adam is mentioned here, he is mentioned, I guess, like I said, as part of a start of a project, because, because as the angel said, you know, there's going to be like disorder in the earth with, with this, with this progeny. And then with regards to, uh, Iblis, Iblis is being made, made of fire or shaitan. Those are beings of makes that, that inspire like arrogance and pride and egotism. Ah. Like, I guess uh, in, in summary, like, I view it more as like an analogy of some sort. Like, like, for example, like when Allah says, when Allah says to Adam, don't eat this fruit from, from this tree, uh, a verse that comes to mind as, as is cited by, by our second Khalifa is, is from uh, chapter 14 uh, regarding, uh, I think, the tree tree of good or tree tree of evil. I think in regards mm. to uh, oh, it, wait, chapter it's Ibrahim. Not a it's it, not a hadith. It, it, chapter it's, Ibrahim, not a hadith. It's, 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 it's from the it's Quran. Not even a verse. It's not even a verse. The tree is never called the tree of good and evil. This is from the Bible. So, it is not no, from the Quran. I'm, I'm saying like there's a verse, like I can show you, like let me find it. It, it is not from the Quran. It's never called the tree of good and evil in the Quran. It's just called a tree. Right. I mean, I mean, this is like a verse that's that's not included in in out book. It just says right. It just says trees. Yeah, it just says tree. But you, what you're doing is actually quoting the uh, Bible and actually applying it to the Quran as if it's a reliable source of information. I mean, I I've, I've used it like as as part of like for like. As part of understand of our understanding, like because, like I said, like we, we were created to worship Allah, right. not not like go astray. So that's what I mean. So, so so let me let me ask you this: Why do you believe that the tree was called the tree of good and evil? Do you understand the theology of why the Bible calls it the tree of good and evil? Do you know why it's called the tree of good and evil in Genesis? Yeah. Why? Because the tree of good will will give Adam eternal eternal life, but if he eats from the tree of evil, and I just had a stream with our no, about says, the it says the tree of good and evil. So it's one tree, yeah. and it's called of good and evil. So it's not if you eat from one tree, you'll have eternal life. If you have eat from another tree, you'll be okay. Fair, fair enough. Like, in regards yeah. to like the fruit, mm -hmm. the fruit like a good fruit and then bad fruit. I right? basically. God is telling Adam, don't eat from the bad fruit or you will surely die. It never, it never mentions in the Bible, it never mentions in the Bible that he ate a bad fruit. It just says he ate from the tree of good and evil. So where'd you get this interpretation from? Okay, so well, I, I'm not understanding because because RC like admits to like that's there was like forbidden fruits. Like, okay, I'm not, I'm not talking about Ahmadiyya right now. I'm talking okay, about yeah, yeah, no, no, but you're taking a Christian perspective and applying it to the Quran, right? Which is very problematic in of itself. Now the tree of good and evil, right? When you actually look at it, right? The, 
the the what well, the Christian claim at least, right, is that Adam was created with eternal life, right? He was already created perfect. He was already created with eternal life. When he ate from the fruit, sin entered the world, right? That's how they say sin entered the world. Now, from right, Islamic theology, sin. right, the original sin doctrine, right? But the Islamic theology denies original sin, and so does Judaism. Right? So the Hebrew Bible explicitly denies original sin. All right, now, and Islam completely denies this as well. So to appeal to this, the tree being called the tree of good and evil, which is which carries this name due to the implication of original sin and trying to apply it to the Quran, which completely denies original sin, is completely false. So you've got to be very careful, and this is why you've got to stick to what the Quran says, right, and apply that to the Bible. What you've done, you've turned it the other way around. You've taken what the Bible says and applied it to the Quran. You've made the Bible and Muhammad on the Quran when it's the Quran and Muhammad on the Bible. Like, as I've said, like, I, I cited, like, like, in terms of, like, man, man being created in the image of God just as part of, like, a, a common understanding. And then, and, then I said, an and then I said, then I mentioned the Quranic verse, how mankind was created to worship Allah, but then they went astray. So that that's what I that's what I meant. And then in regards to, like, the tree, like, when I said, like, of an evil tree and a good tree, that was cited from from Surah Ibrahim, I was not. I was not talking about Genesis. I was. Okay. I was saying like in terms of a tree, like. All right, in Surah Ibrahim. When you eat from a tree, okay, like it's in either like you 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 follow the guidance of Allah, or or eating a bad fruit, or you don't follow the guidance of Allah. These these are pure metaphors that are clearly put out in the Quran in Surah Ibrahim. Uh, you would have to cite the verse for me, inshallah, because what I know in the Quran, when it talks about a, an evil uh, tree, this is the tree, uh, I think it's uh, the tree of Zorqum, if I'm not mistaken, that's what it's called. Um, and this is uh, in Hellfire, right? Uh, which is a completely different sort of than it, which I guess later on... Well, that's what I'm saying, if you provide the reference, if you provide the reference, then that's fine. So, no, because yeah, you said yeah, yeah, it yeah, in yeah, Surah Ibrahim. But, but, that's, but that's the mindset that I am gathering from from the holy quran and then from let me what's that yeah no it's just because like i said you, you've been using various biblical terms i mean even from the six thousand years this is a biblical thing right the whole tree of life thing this is a biblical thing and obviously before uh, earlier in the morning for me and last night for you um you mentioned about the metaphor regarding elijah and John the Baptist again. Like it's not like a thousand years, like like yeah. uh, no, day to but, Allah. Yeah, but a day to Allah. Look, we already agreed that uh, we already know this as well because we know that to Allah, you know, a day could be equal a thousand years or even more, fifty thousand years, right? So um, this is not an issue because Yom Qiyamah, for example, is called Yom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the day of judgment, and we know that that lasts for fifty thousand years. So a day to Allah is fifty thousand years. Uh, for that specific amount of time, right? So he decides how long a day will be. So when, the, when we're going all the way back now to the hadith in Sahih Muslim, and Allah, and remember, Allah says that each day will be the equivalent of a year. So one day will uh, be as long as a year, right? And how do we know this is literal? Because Rasulullah, when the Sahaba heard this, they said, well, Rasulullah, how are we going to manage our prayers? And also, I actually mentioned to them, measure it, right? Work it out. So why would the also I tell them to work something out if it's a metaphor, right? He's clearly telling them that, yeah, each of these 40 days will be the length of a year. So you work out your prayers so that you may, you pray a year's worth of prayer in that one day for 40 days. Right? So it's very explicit and everything and I, and I just want to ask you because I, you know i need to make your point as well um if it's possible like, if we can get some q a like, as well i'm sorry just like it's getting like pretty much like a certain time for me now so i'm gonna oh, okay. close close up soon but i do okay. i do want to do another one of these so. no definitely and uh, inshallah next time we can have some q a because there were a couple of questions that i did want to address from the comments um uh but obviously because 
we've agreed that we want to do this one on one and have this dialogue. I didn't really pay too much attention to that. Um, but yeah, definitely, inshallah, next time if we can allow time for a QA as well to, to both of us, if that's okay with you, it's not a problem. Yeah, 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 that's that's fine. Like, I, I occasionally do that with uh, RC. Yeah, no, that's fine, that's good. Cool. Yeah. yeah, but and I think I, yeah. I might have like missed some of your last points, but I will say though that, uh, I guess part, I think as part of these conversations, it's like part of like a learning process. Like, like you might like uh, be challenged with something that you never even thought of before, and then and then you take that perspective, and then you become like aware of it. So that way, you over time come up with an answer based off one's own understanding, right? Because you know, as part of like my my conclusions, I mean. Uh, you have you have your own understanding of Islam, and I also have uh, my my own understanding of Islam. I mean, even even if you may not agree that that I am a Muslim per se, I mean, you do agree that I do practice like Islamic traditions, and that I do like follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a prophet, and I follow his traditions. And you you could not uh, agree with that. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you yeah, could, no, you could agree with that. No, right. So in terms of what I agree, do I agree that you follow some Islamic traditions? Yes, I believe that you pray like we do, that you would do hajj like we do, that you would fast like we do, that you would pay zakat like we do, and so on and so forth. Do I believe you're a follower of Rasulullah ﷺ? No, I don't. And the reason being is because whatever Rasulullah ﷺ has said in terms of revelation that he has received from Allah, what Allah and his messenger have said, you explicitly deny. Uh, and this is not, and you keep saying, you know, that I should come to some sort of opinion. My opi I tell you again and again and again, my opinion doesn't matter one bit, right? I never talk about anything without any evidence behind it, right? So this is why I always appeal to Allah, his messenger, his messengers, and the scholars, right? Um, so why, and this is what we've been arguing, right? Uh, or discussing, really. Putting our point, points across, right? When it comes to Adam, right? This is not something that's found in the Quran and Sunnah or from the ulama in terms of evolution or Adam being something, sorry, that's more of a, of a reformist position, which we explicitly deny. Um, when we talked about, you know, Isa Islam and him dying, this is not something that Rasul Isa Islam ever, yeah, what do you call it, appealed to. This is not something that's a harbor knew about okay um though there were very though there were fringe opinions i'm not gonna i'm gonna grant you that that there were fringe opinions where people believe that to have meant death yeah this is not uh, something that's unknown to us but what is the correct opinion is that he's high and he's alive and um you know and, and of course the other points in terms of the interpretation of the hadith and I asked you about the interpretation. You said it's your opinion, uh, your opinion. And as a follower, right, as a believer in Allah and His messengers, you you will never put your opinion in front of Rasulullah So when Rasulullah is giving you the exegesis, and the scholars are giving you the exegesis, you will not say, "Okay, well, my opinion." Right? This is just not something we, that you would do. Um, you would examine the opinions of those that are more learned than either of us. Right? And you would look at the differences of opinions, the reasoning behind the differences of opinions, and then you would come to a conclusion right? or a certain position, you would take up a certain decision. Um, so yeah, th this would be my conclusion. Uh, like I said, I do acknowledge that you do do some of the um, uh, Muslim practices, but in terms of your Aqidah, in terms of your faith, I do have problems with it based on the evidence from the Qur'an and the Sunnah and someone who claims to follow Allah and his messenger should accept what Allah and his messenger has said without um, interpreting it in, in a way that has not been interpreted by them or the people of knowledge. Um, so yeah, that would be my conclusion, inshallah. Okay. <clears throat> well, Jazakallah for coming on okay. and uh, doing this uh, conversation with me and uh, Inshallah, uh, maybe in the future we'll, we'll do uh, more of these.
Now, obviously, I'm actually I'm looking still, forward to still it. not going to come on those streams just because, you know, what I've already told you. But, right. but however, you know, I am not against like having a, a cat, like a conversation with you on theology. You know, I never ever said that don't, I'm not going to talk to you. No, I'm not. Right. No, I appreciate that. Well, you know, I'm not going to ask you. The the invite to my streams are open ended, and obviously, we're on my streams. Um, I'm not as calm. Well, when I say I'm not as calm, I'm usually calm on my streams. I don't usually get calm. fired up. Calm, 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 calm. calm, calm. You know, calm. chills. Yeah. So on on my streams, you know, I'm usually more forward because I could really try and pin you on points today. But this is not the purpose of this. It's just a respectful and calm conversation but on my stream the purpose is to really challenge and really put people on the spot on their claims and really concentrate that so that's why i'm uh, oh you've kind of done that with me today and then in turn i've done that with you i mean that's i mean well yeah of course, with, I, I, i'm yeah. just i haven't i haven't pressed on you as much as i normally would <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so because you know you know yeah, we, we just want to we want to do this properly but inshallah I, I hope that um you watch back on this and you look at the points i've raised and the argumentations that i've raised and realize that you were not able to provide much at least during this conversation much evidence from people who are learned or from uh, much evidence from the quran and the sunnah because ultimately you gave your own interpretation of those for the most part rather than saying well Fatah al-Bari says this or Sheikh so-and-so said that and you know um, now I, I understand that I haven't specifically named any Shiuch specifically but you know of course I've already, I've already presented the evidences beforehand anyway on I mean, we both presented Europe. like both of our cases based off of memory and, you know, yes, exactly. I, yeah. I want to. I want to say another thing. Like, this is something you and I hold hold in common. Like, mm -hmm. you, you and I, uh, we, we aren't like, I would say, like normally that frequent of streamers. Like, you and I only recently became a lot more proficient on on YouTube within the past year. So, yeah. we're we're kind of you and I. We're we're learning like how like we're going to like talk. Like I like I'm used to talking like on key keyboard discussions all the time but but i'm trying to get more proficient in in like actually having a verbal conversation because because in verbal conversations i might miss some points that you said that's why i have to write it down because whereas in comparison to written discussions you know that's for the most part no problem for me mm. that's just memory no, I'm, 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 with, i think for both of us like memorizing like exactly our references like i think something you and i hold in common is we're good with numbers but even if we're not practiced all the time uh, we are good with memorizing numbers yeah alhamdulillah you know so we've got we've both got our strengths and weaknesses in terms of our uh, and i agree with you we do have uh, things to work on both of us so but alhamdulillah it's sufficient for now in terms of conversing and putting our points yeah. across alhamdulillah but may allah listen may allah guide you May Allah guide all of us. Um, may Allah, uh, you know, um, you know, give you success in your learning of Arabic. May Allah make me better in the Arabic language. May Allah uh, guide us to understand what He's actually revealing to us to allow us to comp to contemplate upon the Quran and the Sunnah, and be among the strangers so not just guide us but make us among the strangers of the planets where we follow allah and his messenger unapologetically and hold on to his rope regardless of the uh, uh the tests that befall us and may allah makes us both successful may allah, may allah make the almost successful in this world and the next and inshallah maybe uh at the moment we disagree but inshallah one day we'll agree together uh, upon what Allah and His Messenger has revealed to us, and we enjoy each other's company in Jannah, inshallah. This is what I hope for us, inshallah. And then I think, like, another request I have for you, and, I th and even for me, is uh, I think uh, we should pray for one another, especially for this Ramadan, because that's 
where all the bounties of Allah are opened. Uh, so, like, even if like we might like discuss debate, like, it is very important that we also place emphasis on prayer that Allah guides one of the two parties to the truth, and because we're, I mean, we're both absolutely certain in in the viewpoints that we hold, but since there's not really an agreement that we that's why we have to like turn to like like prayer like like praying for one's guidance to the right path because that's what everyone is like obligated to do when they do uh dawa right because then it also helps like remove like arrogance and pride like that that's that's the whole point like why i i place emphasis on prayer so with that said, Jazakwa, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin, kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim, in a kahamidu majid, Allahumma barak Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin, kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim, in a kahamidu majid. So,